This Drake and Kendrick beef is really awesome. It's so cool because you have no idea what's going to happen day to day. If they're going to drop back to back tracks, if Drake's going to drop a day, Kendrick is going to drop today. If they're going to drop two songs today, if they're going to drop five songs this week, you just have no idea what's going to happen. And it's super cool. It's awesome going through Twitter and like seeing everybody's reaction to shit. It's so cool, you know, how they just drop shit. Uh, it's so cool seeing like the lines that they say to each other. It's just sick. It's it's nice competition. It's really nice to enjoy, honestly. But honestly, it's a lot more than just competition. These guys are going at each other. Like they are not friends. They do not like each other at all. That's really true for Kendrick to Drake. Like you can easily tell listening to any of these songs that Kendrick actually hates Drake. He like absolutely despises him. In multiple of these songs, he calls Drake a pedophile. He says there's uh child traffickers there's sex offenders in drake's camp ovo and then drake does crazy allegations of kendrick drake says that kendrick beats his wife like just crazy shit like fucking insane shit so this beef started i think end of march or middle of march i can't remember exactly i think it was around march though because that's when future and metro boomin dropped we don't trust you which was a whole album, and then a week later they dropped We Still Don't Trust You. The first one, by the way, is way better than the last. We Don't Trust You is has it has a lot of bangers on it, dude. It is pretty fire. But on that album, they had a song with Kendrick Lamar called Like That, and that song is fucking fire. That shit is actually amazing. And, uh, you know, it was like a little diss. It wasn't anything too crazy. Kendrick basically just said, fuck the big three, it's only big me. And fuck the big three, meaning J. Cole, Drake, and, and Kendrick, it's only big me. So he's saying that he's better than all of them, basically. It wasn't anything too crazy. It was just like, oh my god, he said, fuck these guys, holy shit. It really wasn't crazy at all. But the song was really good, and people like a good diss. So, you know, that song really blew up. Um, J. Cole made a response, he made like a little 10 track, 13 track little mixtape, and he made a little response to it, you know, I think he dissed Kendrick or some shit like that, but then he retracted his statement like a day later. And he was like, that's the lamest shit I've ever done. Such goofy behavior. But I guess maybe J. Cole saw the, uh, or maybe he had the insight to know how crazy this beef would get. And he was like, all right, I'm going to drop out before they, you know, before Kendrick exposes that I don't fold my clothes and, you know, that I have a broken iPad or some shit. I really don't want that information getting out about my life. So ever since then, and J. Cole dropped out of the beef. Nobody has been going towards J. Cole at all, which I guess was pretty smart on his end. But Drake didn't drop out, so now the beef is only between Drake and Kendrick. And so Drake made a response. I think he uploaded it only on, like, Instagram and Twitter or something like that. I know he didn't put it on YouTube. But he, he did that, and then a little while later, he made an AI diss track, which was, like, kind of goofy, honestly. It was cool, you know, it wasn't anything too crazy. He did the AI voice of Tupac and the AI voice of Snoop Dogg, which is kind of weird. I mean, you know, Snoop Dogg's alive. He would have absolutely hopped on that track if you asked him. I feel like, maybe not. But, you know, he did the little AI Tupac and AI Snoop Dogg, and then... I think it was two weeks, something like that, two weeks after Drake dropped that little AI thing, Kendrick dropped, what was it, Euphoria. Yeah, five days ago. So this beef has fucking sped up in the last week. Five days ago, Kendrick dropped Euphoria. And I'm going to be honest, I haven't listened to it. Um, I haven't listened to it in its entirety. I've just seen clips about it on Twitter. It didn't seem that crazy, you know. I'm not a big fan of Kendrick Lamar songs, if I'm going to be completely honest. I and I know I'm gonna get judged for this, I don't care, I do not really like that style of rap, I really like, like, my favorite artists right now, for example, are, like, Young Thug, Future, um, Playboy Cardi, Ken Carson, uh, Travis Scott, you know, shit like that, where the lyrics don't even fucking matter, they say fuck all for the entire song, you know, it's just a vibe, so for that reason, I like Drake more, personally, because of his music, you know, Drake is a lot easier at just putting shit on and just chilling you know what i mean kendrick he says shit in his songs you gotta dissect it i understand people love that shit it's just not for me you know what i mean so i didn't listen to the kendrick joint because i'm not really too crazy about this rap beef i'm not like oh man who's gonna win this i don't really care i just want to hear some music you know what i mean so kendrick dropped euphoria i still didn't really care about this whole thing i was like okay that's that's cool and then Drake dropped Family Matters. And he dropped Family Matters like three days after Kendrick dropped Euphoria. And it's a music video. 
So I was like, damn, that's kind of crazy. Like, that's a crazy response, you know? It took Kendrick like two weeks to respond to Drake's little diss track. And then Drake responds three days later. Holy shit, talk about speed. And it's a music video. And it's a pretty good song. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's actually really good. Drake knows how to make a bop. You know what I mean? He knows how to make a good song. So that shit was actually pretty fire. Out of the three parts on that song. Sorry, I hit my mic there. You may have heard something. Out of the three parts on that song, there's one, two, and three. I think the last one is honestly my favorite i just really like the b i like how he flows on it and that is the third part is also the most heavy hitting towards kendrick you know that third part is where he says kendrick is a wife beater essentially he also says that kendrick proposed in 2015 but they're still not married like they're still engaged which i think is crazy to propose to someone and like nine years later still not marry them so that was pretty wild uh you know him saying that he beats his wife is pretty wild too unfortunately though you know beating women isn't something new in hip-hop that which is really unfortunate so that's not really too looked down upon that's not really that uncommon and overall i thought the drake song was absolute fire i thought it was really good i really liked it so you know, I was like, okay, this is sick. I don't know how Kendrick is going to respond to this, but that'll be pretty cool. Maybe I'll check it out if he does. I swear to God, about 30 minutes after Drake dropped his song, Kendrick dropped Meet the Grams. And this shit actually goes. It goes. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't think Meet the Grams is as, like musical like replay value song as family matters is i think drake is really good at making songs with good like high replayability i don't think kendrick really does that too much i don't think honestly i don't think anybody is going to listen to meet the grams a month from now whereas i can totally see people banging family matters a month from now not too many people because it is a diss track i don't think well, at least me personally i don't want to listen f in my free time a song of a like, I don't want to listen to a diss track in my free time. So I don't know if any of these songs will really stand the test of time. But it is cool for the sport. And this is a pretty fucking crazy song from Kendrick. He basically goes and he says, you know, Dear Drake's son, this is who your father is. Dear Drake's mother, this is who your son is. Dear Drake's father, this is who your son is. It is crazy. He calls Drake a horrible person. He says he wishes he would die. Just crazy shit like you can tell with this song and the beat is so haunting you can tell that kendrick like actually hates drake and it was a power move honestly because it completely stole the spotlight away from drake i think drake's video would have gotten way more views meet the grams now has way more views well not way more it's 2 million drake's has 11 million views kendrick has 13 million views but i think if kendrick didn't drop 30 minutes after Drake, Drake's would have gotten a lot more views, but Kendrick was like, no, I'm stealing the spotlight immediately, which I think is really cool. And then just last night, Kendrick drops Not Like Us, and then I was like, okay, I'm making a video about this, because holy fuck. Kendrick drops Not Like Us, and I haven't listened to the song in its entirety either. I've just seen, like, clips on Twitter and shit, so I basically get the gist of the song, you know? Like I said, I'm not a big, like, Kendrick enjoyer. I'm not a big, oh my god, I have to have five historians to understand the meaning behind this lyric i'm just not that type of guy i understand that people really like that music it's just not for me you know what i mean but out of all the diss tracks that kendrick has put out i think not like us is the one with the most replayability by far you know it, he has he does some cool little stuff with his voice which i always appreciate when artists do like cool vocal inflections and shit like that and it's a really good beat. He flows on it. It's just really well put together. This one has, by far, the most replayability out of all the songs he's come out with. And the cover art is hard, dude. It's Drake's Toronto mansion with the... Uh, there's there's an app. I've saw, I saw this on Twitter. There's apparently an app that it shows you all the sex offenders in your area. And they get hit with those little red dots with the, with the person. Like the little blacked out contact on them. And so basically, you know, he put Drake's house and then he put those little sex offender things all over the house, basically calling Drake a sex offender. And he doesn't just call Drake a sex offender in the cover art. He calls Drake a sex offender in the actual song. He says he, instead of, you know, Drake's album called Certified Lover Boy, Kendrick says Certified Pedophiles. Um, if you're trying to strike a chord, you should be striking A minor or some shit like that. He basically just says Drake is a pedo. And, you know, he's got people in his camp in OVO who are sex offenders and he's got them on payroll. Just a bunch of crazy shit. I'm really enjoying this because, I don't know, it's just fun. <laughs> 
But God dang, dude, Drake has got to respond. I hope he responds tonight, because like I said, I really like Drake's music. Not all of it, obviously. I just think out of the two artists, you know, Drake is better than Kendrick. I wouldn't put Drake in like my top 10, probably. But you you gotta admit that, oh, well, maybe I would put him in like the top 10, because he has a fuck ton of bangers. He's really good at making like a hit song. So I don't know, man, but you know... Uh, Drake has got to respond because Kendrick's output is just insane. 30 minutes after Drake drops, the next day Kendrick drops another one. It's like, God damn, every minute that Drake does not drop, people's hopes are going to get higher and higher and higher. So he's just got to drop something, dude. This shit's pretty crazy. I just wanted to talk about it for a bit because I really like this shit. I've pretty much... I don't want to say only, but I've mainly listened to hip-hop, trap, shit like that for the last seven fucking years of my life. So, you know, seeing shit like this, it's just awesome because, you know, it's the genre I really like. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about this for a little bit because I really, I just think this shit is really fun. And, uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll see y'all later.